Hi, I am Yang Yanchen Liu, a PhD student in Duke University from Professor Dobo's lab. In this presentation, I am going to introduce the model-based simulation of laser lysotropy using a so-called cut frame method. In this work, a relatively simple energetic model is developed based on a one size siphon Severini model. The cut frame scheme allows the interface geometry to be arbitrarily relative to the mesh. Interfacial constraints were imposed weakly using a variation of Nietzsche's method. This is the outline. Firstly, I will introduce the motivation and underlying physics briefly. Laser ablation simulations are of great interest and utility for engineering and medical applications. For example, the laser lysotropy, which literally means using pulsed laser to break kidney stone in human body, is one of the useful medical treatments for kidney stone. The underlying physics of laser ablation mainly include Firstly, the heat conduction. The laser energy is absorbed by the stone sample and the interface tracking and the phase change or the material removal. In this work, fluid dynamic fluid interaction is not considered to simplify the problem. Now let's look at the model for problem of interest. In this work, due to the symmetry of laser beam, we use the 2D axiometric model rather than the general, general 3D cylindrical model as the subfigure B shows here. The strong form of the initial boundary value problem is listed in these slides, where we have heat conduction with boundary conditions and initial condition. And on the top surface, on the top surface, uh, there is laser energy flux, where LT here means the latent heat. The level set function is used to track the moving interface, and this so-called siphon condition is used to make sure that the materials is only removed if the temperature reaches the melting temperature, Tm, and the material is only removed and not added to the surface. The corresponding weak form is introduced with the trial and test function space. Here we introduce sigma as a slack variable in convenience to derive the Nietzsche's form. As we mentioned before, the Nietzsche's method is used to weakly impose the interfacial constraints. We use this penalty form to weakly enforce sigma gamma less than or equals to zero. Then the Stefan Signorini Nietzsche's formulation can be rewritten in this form where A and L denotes the bilinear and linear form respectively. The Nietzsche's formulation finally looks like this. We have a nonlinear term here. Then here comes the laser profile. In this work, the laser beam is assumed to be directly downward towards the, do the domain omega from above. And we use a Gaussian distribution to describe the spatial profile of the laser beam, the Gaussian distribution as this equation shows. Also, in order to model the laser pulse with a periodical evolution in time, we use a temporal periodical switch function to control the behavior of laser pulse, which is this function and the figure is showing here. And to match the laser energy input between the 2D axiometric model and the 3D model, a factor is needed. Now let's look at the FEM discretization. To derive the Galakin form, Firstly, we need to introduce some important domains firstly. Um, 
the material domain defined by the level set function, which is changing because the material is being removed, and the integration domain, omega h, which is just the linear approximation of the material domain, and the background domain, omega b, which is fixed, consists of the background mesh, which is also fixed. And finally, the active domain consists of the active mesh, which include elements that, which at least have some intersection with the material domain. The Galakian form is listed here, where the final element space is defined on the active domain. The details of bilinear term, linear term, and boundary terms are listed here. We use the so-called ghost penalty stabilization proposed by Berman in 2010 to prevent air conditioning when the interface approaches a node, a set of element edges, as, as the figure shows when the interface is closing to nodes or, or, or edges. Then to describe the motion of the interface discretely, we need the discrete form of the interface evolution as follows. The left side function is updated by the solution of the advection equation. Note that the final element space of the level set is defined on the whole background domain, omega b. Then the discretized advection problem becomes to find phi h at n plus one step, time step, where here the tall SD is the streamlined diffusion parameter proposed by Hansborough et al. in 2016. And in this work, the parameter theta equals 2.5. The mesh refinement strategy of the cut fam is as follows. An adaptive mesh refinement strategy is adopted in which the mesh intersected by the interfa interface gamma is refined at each step. And this figure shows. Next, to update the mesh, a two-grade solution is adopted. That firstly, a piecewise linear function is projected from the piecewise quadratic zero level set function on a refined mesh which this gray line shows. Then this linear function is used to determine the intersection between the refined mesh and gamma as this um, point. Finally, we connected these nodes and find the updated linear process approximation of interface and integration domain, which is shaded here. For the temporal discretization, a simple background Euler scheme is implemented with this um, penalty parameter set where H is mesh size. And a semi smooth Newton Raphson algorithm is adopted here and a reduced space active, space active set solver for variational inequalities based on Newton's method which is from pet C package is adopted to enforce a lower bound to prevent unphysically small temperature due to a relatively large laser energy flux inputs. Now, before we finally come to simulation results, I have to introduce the experiments of post laser ablation so that we can have some sense on how the model should behave and what is necessary in the model. The experiment setup and laser beam illustration are shown in figure. The diameter D of the irradiated laser beam increases with standoff distance, with the distance from the tip of the fiber. Here denotes SD, so-called standoff distance. A series of experiments were performed for SD equals to zero and 0 0.5 millimeter up to 1,000 passes. The material used in experiments is bigger stone. Bigger stone is often employed as a phantom material for kidney stone, as it has acoustic and mechanical properties that are similar to human renal calculi. 
prior to the laser ablation experiments, Bakerson samples were soaked in water for 204 hours. Sorry, for, for 24 hours, I'm sorry. Although Bakerson has been mechanically characterized fairly well, its thermal properties have yet to be thoroughly measured. As a reasonable proxy in the simulations reported here, we use the thermal properties of gypsum as this table shows. In this slide, the figure shows the 3D and 2D cross-sectional plots for 1,000 process experiments on Bakerstone samples. These results are obtained from the OCT scanning on the top surface of the Bakerstone sample. In this figure, the resulting volume and array of observed ablated craters are plotted as a function of pulse number. The data shown here correspond to the mean value from 10 sets of experiments with error bar indicating the standard deviation. The results generally indicate that the crater volume and areas increase quickly during the first 200 passes, but eventually saturate at some point. Finally, we note that the volumes and areas decrease as the standard distance increases. This is because the energy density of laser impacting the surface decreases as the distance between the surface and the laser tip increases, as we've shown in this um, subfigure B. Besides the straightforward analysis of the crater volume and array, we also performed a simple analysis energy, energy analysis to estimate what portion of the total laser energy delivered to the sample is absorbed to ablate the material. The total energy needed to ablate the crater consists of two parts, where Q1 stands for the energy needed to rise the temperature of the entire ablated volume uniformly to the melting temperature and Q2 stands for the phase change heat. So this is a rough estimated estimate. We can calculate the effective absorption A bar here. And from the figure, we can clearly observe that only a portion of laser energy is needed to ablate the material, which literally less than 2%. Okay, finally, let's look at the simulation results. The computational domain is defined as follows. The laser beam parameters are chosen according to the laser equipment used in experiments. And the, zero, the initial zero level set is defined to be the top surface of the sample. And zero flux boundary conditions are implemented except for the top surface. So on the top, sur top surface, there will be uh, the laser energy flux input, which is applied to e evolving crater surface. And the initial temperature field is set to be the room temperature. And this figure illustrates the resulting laser energy fluorescence profile at time. And to be note that, uh, we use A times I using an absorption of A equals to 2% of the total energy and the center of distance of SD equals to zero millimeter. Because as we know from the experiment, there's only a part of the total laser energy is actually absorbed. So we have to use this absorption ratio here. So this figure compares the simulation result and to the experimental measurement for SD equals to zero. Simulations were performed only for less than 500 passes. And this was the point where all crater volume had saturated. The result indicate that the absorption ratio of 0.5% and 2% effectively bound ex experiment, experimental measurements in terms of matching the experimental measurement for crater volume and area and absorption ratio of 1% appears to provide a reasonable good comparison. The thermal ablation simulation result for 0.2 joule, 1% absorption and varying SD for multiple laser process 
laser pulses are shown in this figure. The comparison between the external experimental observations and the simulation results once again indicate that A equal to 1% model tracks the real ablation behavior well for both SD equals to zero and SD equals to 0.5 millimeter cases. We note that both simulation and experiment results for the crater volume saturates around 200 process. And this can be easily explained by simulations. That is, as the surface sublates, the distance between the surface and the tip of the laser increases. Consist with, consistent with the spreading of the laser beam with distance points further away from the laser tip, we experience lower energy density, as we show in, in, in this figure. So after a sufficient level of ablation, the surface is too far from the laser beam to become sufficiently heated and reach the melting temperature. This phenomenon also helps explain why the crater volumes and area decreases when the standoff distance is increasing. As shown in subfigure B, the area also saturates earlier uh, at around 100 process for SD equals to 0.5 compared to SD equals to one cases, which saturate around 200 process. The geometry of a typical experimental crater at 200 pulse SD equals to zero is compared against simulation results for various absorption ratio from 0.5% to 2%. And th this result also indicate that an absorption ratio of 1% once again, you have the best comparison between the simulation result and the experiments. And uh, effective absorption A bar for multi experiments and simulations for varying absorption A and standard distance are illustrated in this figure. Note here that for each simulations, we calculate the effective absorption A bar using the calculated ablated volume. So the volume is from the, the simulations and the total laser energy, which is from the experiments. In comparison with experimental data, the effective absorption reveals that the simulation tracks the changing trend of the crater volume as, a, as the ablation proceeds. From the figure, we note that the subtle difference between the experiment data of varying standoff distance from zero to 0.5 millimeter is also captured. This shows that the proposed energetic axiometric model catches the underlying physics of the whole laser ablation process pretty well. Thank you, this is the uh, reference. Thank you.